welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I'm starting in on my kitchen renovation or my kitchen update or kitchen makeover. Any way you want to look at it, it has got to have a little bit more of a modern feel. I have built in place or custom built plywood cabinets that are strong as steel. There's no reason to really rip them out and redo anything, but the faces of them are just routed plywood doors with the curved edges and those curved edges and the simple hinges and, and the little pediment above. All of those things combined along with the pediment above the sink. I'm not sure what to do with that. I've taken out the 1990s floor tile already and I've been walking across a sticky floor from 12 by 12 self stick tiles. But you know what? Those self-sticking tiles are really easy for a DIY, quick, cheap home improvement. Well, they're not so cheap. I picked up about eight boxes of these 18 by 18, and it was $340. So they're roughly, I think it was roughly about $45 a box. Now this is the color I had originally gotten last year and they didn't have any in stock. It wasn't showing as discontinued, but I need to go with what is available at the store so I can get through this project. Now I've laid sheets of linoleum and it's really hard to work with a full width sheet of linoleum and I don't really want to have to do a theme for the walkway that goes to the rest of the house if I don't have to. No now I've got cutouts behind you for a built-in oven. We've got this 1950s gas range top. The range hood doesn't look bad, but I would like if these cabinets were a little bit higher. I don't know if I'll do much with this because it really is too low to ever to be able to use a built-in microwave. Now that being said, if I stick with a built-in oven, a lot of times it's a two combo unit now with a built-in oven, a built-in broiler, and then the built-in microwave. So two and sometimes three doors on them. I really like to just have a freestanding gas range or stove unit here so that all the cooking will be in one central location. The camera is actually set up right on top of the refrigerator now and there's a small built-in panel of cabinets behind you. I'll give you a quick 360 and show you what I'm thinking. Okay, so here's where you started and these cabinets being lower, they any modern cabinet would probably come to about maybe here and then this could be raised up. However, with the soffit up above, it makes it really hard to have drop down appliances of any kind like a built-in microwave. A lot of people aren't fans of microwave cooking so I didn't want to make a big huge investment in this, but I do want to do something for a backsplash. I've already taken off the counter backsplashes that were on here because when the last tenants lived here, they let their kids do lots of washing and lots of splashing. So there was water damage there. So, you know, basic white appliances, nothing fancy. I moved the microwave up here today just to get it up off of the countertop. And there is an outlet that I could turn this to a four gang to power the oven and a microwave if it needed to stay there but I'm really thinking it would be a better idea to take this out and have it be cabinet space. Now this lower cabinet here on this side, my husband and I put in a false bottom because that is a laundry chute to the basement. In a tenant situation, I didn't want any little kids falling down from the ceiling in the basement to the floor and getting hurt. So you can see it's a small kitchen with a small eat-in nook. And right now I have the breaker off, so I can't show you everything, but I've got some water damage to repair here, so I have held this off to be the last job in the house. I updated the ceiling lights uh, several years ago from the 1950s style, and I've already gone through and done all the doors and hardware, so the hardware for that is gonna be going on soon. I've picked out stainless steel knobs and poles for the cabinet cupboards and drawer poles. There was a bank of cabinets that came out here into a U-shape and it really made this walkway. You can see here where it went to. Very narrow to walk through and I just thought it would be better to open that up so that anybody coming through has a better flow of traffic, more space for a table because this is the only eating area in the house. Now with the exception, back in the days, a lot of times people would have a bigger dining room table here and use this room as the grand dining room and then have the family room down in the basement. That's always an option as well. Since we have a 
built-in fireplace that is a wood-burning fireplace in the basement. It's just beautiful. So we're doing what we can down there. But in the meantime, this is what I'm moving on to while my grout is getting ready to go. So I had a quick 10 minutes to be able to put this together. Now I've got an outlet here for an old wall clock. We're going to get up there and take that out. And we're just going to do a drywall patch and eliminate that wiring because there's no reason for anyone to have a wall clock way up high like that anymore and none of them are ever plug-in style. Everything's battery operated these days. I've got some recessed lighting here that is the old-fashioned style and I'm really not a fan of it. I'd like to close that off and make it a little smaller or a cute little drop-down light. And this cute little detail here is very dating to a 1950s kitchen. It's cute but it kind of blocks the light and it's not really necessary. And once you have any curtain panels up there, it really stops any light from filtering from the window because of the cabinets into the room. You can see the soffit overhang out there. There's really not a lot of light getting in as it is. So I've picked up a dishwasher to install here. It's never had one before. I've been looking at new kitchen countertops, but I have to take my tiles in with me so that I can kind of find something that will complement and look good but not match because I don't want it to look like I use my floor tile on my kitchen counters also. I have been thinking about just doing my own relaminating of the counters. There's kitchen counter paint products, there's homemade epoxy products. So in the meantime, I just took my Sawzall and I went through and cut off the rounded edge here. I have a new bank of cabinets to put here so that I will have lots of drawers because when I took this out, I lost a drawer that was at the top of this cabinet and a small drawer that was at the top of this cabinet and here. So, so I'm currently left with just a small utility drawer in this location here. Like I said, I don't want to put five grand into a kitchen for a house that I'm selling because in our area, after talking to the realtors, it's all based on square footage, not on the condition of the house. But that being said, a 1950s kitchen that hasn't been updated much, just coats of paint here and there and newer appliances at different points but the 1990s oven with the 1950s stovetop is looking dated so I'm thinking stainless steel or white so that I cannot have to go out and buy another stove I can always let somebody else invest their money into buying new appliances if I was a little closer to Black Friday sales I might go ahead and do it but I keep watching I'm looking for used I'm looking for cheap but we're also trying to upgrade to newer appliances, which is real easy to do with Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. There are a couple of used appliance stores by me and they'll do delivery. I'm currently driving a car around all the time, but a slide-in style stove that doesn't have the back on it would fit in the trunk of a cart easy. And then they have a drop-in style stove also. And that's one of my predicaments here is I have a heating vent right under this cabinet, but it's easy to access to the basement. I can easily move it here under the sink or I can put it under the cabinet that I'm installing here. There's already this one right here so I figured this was a little too close. So with the small space and the cabinet being out here I don't know that it's even necessary. I may just take it out all together and cap it off. So I'm trying to figure out if I want to do a wainscoting backsplash here or if I would like to just do a tile backsplash. The problem with the wainscoting backsplash is water resistance and as you can see right here I am looking at the remnants of what was left behind. That press board got wet and crumbled. We've got this old hard plaster and sheetrock here. The way these brackets went in to hold the backsplash, a screw was in the backsplash and it fit right down in that slot. I don't know how easily these are going to come out. But as you can see, that kitchen countertop is just sitting on an edge and it would be real easy to just take the whole thing out. It would be real easy to just go to Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, pick up a mitered corner kitchen countertop that's in stock and get exactly what I need. So I'm going to get some measurements today and look on some pricing, but I think it's really only going to cost about $200 for the standard or even the high resolution laminate countertops to only go to about here because I won't need all this. The trouble is if I need to go to here for a slide in stove, I then I'm going to have to figure in that measurement as well. And I actually found a $100 slide-in gas stove that was probably only about eight years old. But in appliance years, I don't know if that's quite what I want. Okay, so this is what the kitchen floor did look like. 
and it's not the floor I put in. It was actually in the house when I bought it, so 15 or so years ago. And it was in good condition. The thing about these tiles is uh, the old ones are Armstrong tiles. They are lifetime warranty for residential. And I didn't see any reason to pull them all up. I was a first time home buyer. I was a single mom and I didn't have the DIY skills that I have today. So at the time I used a stripper and cleaner and recoated them to seal them and they cleaned up wonderfully. But after all those years and the update that I wanted to do, and then the other thing is pets. The previous residents had two different dogs over the years of a lab breed and they shed a lot. And it's that fine little black hair that I keep finding. So when I saw one or two loose tiles, there's no reason to do their lifetime warranty on it because they were out of date. I believe the tan center square was still available, but not the royal blue center square. So I wasn't going to get a match anyway for one or two tiles. And I really wanted to take out this bump out on the cabinet. So there wasn't a way that I was going to get a match unless they had some in stock somewhere. And guess what? I didn't really want them. So they call this the Traffic Master Peel and Stick Residential Lifetime Warranty. And you can use it in commercial use and get a six-year warranty. So it says low gloss. They are a good adhesive. I have read a lot of reviews about other tiles not having a good adhesive backing on them that are self-sticking. I know my daughter has a bathroom project that she's working on and she really wanted these octagon tiles, but the reviews for the sticking factor were really bad. So she was gonna add her own adhesive to it, which is a really good thing to do. And the important thing is starting with a clean floor. So you see, I've got like some paint stuck to the floor here that from working on the walls and drywall dust, I'm gonna take the heat gun and I'm going to go over it to make sure that it's gonna loosen up anything that has stuck to the floor over the year that I've had the sticky tiles off because the floor was still that sticky glue. You couldn't walk across it very well without hearing crunch, crunch uh, because your shoes were actually sticking to the glue residue that was left on the floor. So all this right here, caked on dirt so i just take my scraper knife my heat gun but this is the start of this project i'm real excited to be starting that we've got a couple of days of rain so i kind of think i need to hold off because if the roof leaks up here it'll drip on the floor so for the meantime i've got a bucket sitting there i couldn't put anything up on the attic and my only alternative is to put a tarp on the roof so this is the start but at the very least, I can start in on my stove deconstruction, my oven deconstruction, and get these listed for sale on Facebook so that somebody can come and buy them and I can use that money towards a freestanding stove. I could start in on my cabinets. And what do you think about a base cabinet color? There's only gonna be the corner cabinet, the side if I keep it over here, this bit of freestanding cabinet, I'm going to keep the uppers white for sure. I'm going to have a white dishwasher here and an end panel with a bank of four here. So very little opportunity for added color. The tiles have a little bit of gray, white, and a little bit of beige. I know a lot of people are really favoring this new color called agreeable gray and I have to decide what to do about the walls. I love the yellow. I saw a kitchen design the other day that was blue and white gingham with yellow lemons and it was just beautiful and I would love to do that in here, but that's not everybody's taste. So I'm gonna save that for my own kitchen and just get this cleaned and updated. So I'm gonna take a tile with me. We're gonna go shopping. Today I'm off to a very late start. I have been out second guessing my tile choice for the floor. One of the things that I thought of that made me think of this is the bathroom tiles are a different shape and I didn't want the square shape to look too old or too old fashioned and maybe a different shape tile like a 12 by 24 rectangle instead of an 18 by 18 square would look better. Now that's why I was getting away from the 12 by 12. Well, I am planning on grouting these instead of having them butt next to each other. So it is going to look like a laid tile. 
Now that being said, I didn't want to have to do a whole new underlayment to have to do actual porcelain tile. There's just no money in the budget for quartz tiles or porcelain tiles, but I do have enough money to do some backsplash work with tiling. So I went ahead the other day and I got the backsplash off and today's project is I'm starting in on taking out the stove. I've made a decision. Now it's always hard to figure out kind of what to do, but I had mentioned before I had picked up this dishwasher. So right now I've just roughly got set in my dishwasher and my bank of drawers so that I can see how it's going to fit, how much room I have. And right now the wall hanging is the only thing holding up my kitchen countertop on this end. So it's not quite level and setting right, but without having to buy all new kitchen appliances, I have got a white KitchenAid refrigerator that just works awesome and it's probably five years old. Now the Maytag double oven, I have questions of keeping it, but it is a double oven. It would be really easy to put an upgrade of a newer unit in here or even just a built-in microwave up here. Because of that 36 opening for the duct on the range hood, well, most of them are normally 30 inch and a lot of stove tops are 24 to 30 inch. Some of the newers are 36 inch. Now I've only got a 34 opening in the base cabinet, so to do 36 is gonna be too big. Well, I lucked out and not close to me at all, but it's gonna be about a two and a half hour drive there and back. I found a GE white porcelain gas top stove that is KitchenAid and it matches the refrigerator. So that's a super good find. Now I had picked up the Maytag dishwasher a while ago. It's white, it's gonna look better than nothing because before there was no dishwasher at all. There was no garbage disposal. Now we've got some wonky electrical work going on here that I've gotta have my husband look into and I've been trying to figure out what to do with the kitchen countertop. So I've got an electrical box here and there was some kind of a water filtration system. So I've gotta have him look into testing this for me to see of its worthiness, but the good thing is is that there's electrical there. So once I get my cabinet base boxed back in for the sink, we can wire up a side panel for the electric on the dishwasher and a garbage disposal. Super good. But this is what I was coming up with for tiles. And you know what? I'm seeing a bit of a standout and a bit of a match. So I did the bathroom in the Mosaic tiles that were real small and they were like one inch by three inch. Now these are a two by four, I believe. And I really like the way they look against this, but I was afraid they might be too tanned color. So I've got to set them out in the light. Now this was called a travertine tile, but there was a lot more gray in it than white. And after I looked at it for a couple of days laid out, I started worrying that maybe there was too much gray in it, that it was too busy or too loud. And I know a table and once the cabinets are in place, it's going to look more calm. And I'm still undecided what to do about the wall color in here but I'm seeing that yellow is not going to be a stay. It is going to have to go neutral. It's going to have to be white. It's going to have to be gray. It's going to have to just be something not bright colored without making the house dark because this is on the back side of the house and a bright cheery kitchen is nice to wake up to in the morning. This tile was at Menards and each one of these was about $3 a piece and and I think that one was about $5. So let me know in the comments below which one you think I should do because the tiling job is probably going to be a week or so off, but boy, look at that. That's almost like contrasting each other. And I think with them not being side by side, like on the wall, this is what I'm thinking is doing a full back here or maybe even a half with a bull nose. Um, capping ridge on the top and that was I believe three inches so if I go all the way to the top I don't have to have the expense of the bullnose cap which was twice as much as a regular tile and that might be a good way to go but I was thinking about putting in one or two big tiles on the stove mount here on the back wall possibly even something with a decorative border around it and then have this going up to it. So let me know what you think about that. But I think this tile is going to give it the updated look that I'm thinking of. So this is what the tiles look like on the wall. Now the countertop stove that I found is all white with black or dark gray grates. So I think looking underneath this light, 
One of the differences I noticed and found out about this is this uh, bullnose tile, bullnose means it's rounded on the top for a finished edge. So you would want that for like a wiping surface, a wiping surface or like here to terminate at the top um, to go around an edge piece. This one was much taller. It was, I believe, four inches uh, by eight. And these, these were two by 12. So this is the matching bullnose cap for this one and here. Now this one seemed way too white against this tile. So standing back, I think the center one would be a good way to go. Now they did have uh, floor and wall tiles that were two by 24. So I could do an accent tile in the center with a two by 24, frame it out with their little edge pieces and then continue on with this and the bull nose. Or just make it the solid wall like that. I'm just kind of toying with different ideas because I do want to go all the way up because of grease and splatter. It's always been, you know, a hard spot to keep clean with a cooktop stove like that with just, you know, the backsplash I had was maybe a three inch backsplash. So you can see where my old backsplash ended. And I liked this one for going here underneath the sink. When I put the window trim on, that's going to cover that up and be the right size without having to do any extra tile cutting, which is always a bonus. <laughs> now that being said, two tiles will fit in that space also because about an inch or two of this was covered by that. So this could go through that area as well without looking wonky or looking funny. And that was surprisingly cheap. I was saying it was about $5. I think it was actually under $4, which was cheaper than the bathroom tiles that I had because it is solid ceramic and I can use the Dremel tool to cut it. I don't have to rent or buy a separate tile cutter. And with these, I know these are gonna be slow cutting because I've got to use a square to be able to cut them all with a straight edge, which is why I was second guessing myself. Also, um, the finish is a little shinier than what I was thinking. But, you know, oh, you second guess, you second guess, and then you never get the job done. So my daughter came over and looked at the bathroom tile, and she thought I should use the same bathroom tile in the kitchen. Now, it's about a month out for ordering them. They didn't have any in stock. They had 15 single sheets, and that's obviously not going to get this job done. Um, that particular store had a few, and the next closest store was an hour and 20 minutes away and they had two boxes. So there was no way I was gonna get this flooring done within a month. Now that being said, I've got a paint, I've got a patch, I'm working on the cabinets, I'm slow. Today was a shopping day comparing tiles. So not getting a lot done. I picked up new bathroom paint to be able to finish that job because the paint they gave me was lavender. It was not beige. And that was the thing that I liked about the bathroom tile. It had gray in it, it had white, it had creams, a little bit of tan, just, it was more of a, um, it looked more like a quartz, a natural quartz tile. So, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. tell me what you think. I know this and this look very similar, but they were about a dollar difference in tile. This one has more white in it. Uh, and I know each individual tile can vary but this one had more gray in it. This one really stood out against this tile, I think a bit too much. So white cabinet uppers, I could do gray lowers, but again, so now, and then that changes my thought on painting the lower cabinets because now I'm gonna have this bank of cabinets stay. This will stay as it is with maybe some minor It takes two wrenches. Use whatever you've got. I've got adjustable wrenches. You can use vice grips. You can use actual measured wrenches. Now, this gas stove top has been in here for God knows how long, and we decided we're gonna save the countertops or else we're gonna have a Formica a laminate overlay because a sheet of laminate is like $36 and a whole new set of countertops. I've got a lazy Susan in the corner and that really threw a monkey wrench into it. So this stove top is ready to come out. Now you want to make sure that any screws holding it into the countertop are already released. 
Otherwise, you're going to screw up the composite material that makes up your countertop. So this is going to need some good cleaning and you want to make sure you know that your gas valve is off. Usually if it's straight up and down in line with the pipe, if you smell gas at all, open a window, get the valve off. Just make sure you know what you're doing. If, you're, if you don't know for sure, maybe ask a neighbor who knows what they're doing to come by. But a lot of times if you buy new appliances at the store, they'll switch these out for you. It doesn't always include an uninstall, in this case with built-ins. So you can see how easy that just came out of there. And if you're gonna be doing any new countertops, you can use that as your layout for your new one. This is why some days I don't get a whole lot done. So either I'm gonna end up painting or relaminating over this with contact adhesive. So all this crud has got to come out. I cannot believe how much food crumbs got up underneath that stove ridge. Holy cow. I think that they probably should have cocked around the edge of it when they installed it because man, oh man, that is dirty. So we're gonna do some cleaning. We're gonna do some painting inside of the cabinets. And this whole inside section is going to get a coat with the bare interior pure white paint because bare paint goes on so good after doing the arm and hammer paint with three coats and still seeing streaking oh my gosh so this upper cabinet if i can show you up close has already been painted and this has been painted two coats you can see brush strokes you can see fillers but it's the window if you can see that now I can see through the paint like it's transparent. Now, yeah, you can see right there really well. That's one coat of paint, I think, possibly two. This was white on white. Now I originally used bare premium paint. Now this time I went through knowing that I was gonna go again and I hit my sander around the edges because I'm gonna trim these out to update them a bit more. And again, lots of cleaning, lots of nail hole filling and if you have holes or damage to your countertop, I'll show you one thing, one tip I'm gonna do here. I've got a little dent here from furniture being moved in that is gonna show up with painting. I can Bondo this and you won't ever see it. Here's another one little chip right here. And these little mounting brackets went right into my countertop and I'm not 100% sure that the tile and caulking is gonna cover that. So I'm gonna hit those with a scraper and possibly a sander and then I'm gonna fill it with Bondo. And there's about six of these across this cabinet and a little over here. So this whole kit, I will tell you, it will do a lot. This was $7.99, I think, at Menards. I've seen it at my local grocery store. I've never seen a smaller kit than this, but this is gonna do wonders for this countertop to fill in those holes. on a new overlay of Formica yet or paint. I actually did some pricing and one quart of the Rust-Oleum countertop paint by itself is $22 and the Gianni countertop kits to repaint it and make it look like any way you want is $80 and the Rust-Oleum countertop transformation kit was $220 which is just all the multiple layers of paint to make it look like a certain thing. So you can take like two cans, paint it a solid color, full finish some other, you can add metallic flakes, you can take the epoxy floor flakes and put it over the top and then put a poly seal over the whole thing. You just have to make sure it's food grade. 
a sheet of just the Formica to go over this or the new laminate for 144 inches was about $40 and 120 inches was I think $39.99. I need 122 and a half inches. So I got to make up for two and a half inches spending about $10 more to get those extra inches. Either way, I decided to go with the countertop. Unlike the stove top, the sink, they used the bead of caulk all around the edge before they set it down and fastened it in with the sink fasteners. So I did the sink fasteners off camera and got my faucets unhooked because those old cruddy lime corroded water lines are really hard to get off. And you know what, there's nothing to show there. It's just some wrenches and make sure your water valves are off and take it off any way you can. I was able to get one off with the water line. The other one, I had to take the water line off at the faucet and we're gonna have to probably put some heat on there with a torch to be able to loosen that line and crud off. But because I wanna replace the base of my cabinet, we're gonna probably cut the water lines completely off and just have the water off to the house when we get to that point. In the meantime, this gives me a chance to start working on the countertop and start working on the backsplash. So on my way today, I stopped at Menards and I got the two by four tiles. I got some sheets of those and guess what? I left my tile cutter at home. So at the very least, I can just keep working on my uninstall of the appliances and I can work on the upper cabinets and thinking about what to do with the lower cabinets in the meantime. So I'm gonna work on getting this caulk off and I'm gonna patch up and fill my holes nonetheless because either way, I don't want the holes there whether I'm gonna go over it with another layer of laminate or not.